and welcome to another jungle video and for this champion guide we will be taking a look at the queen of the jungle and also the spider queen Elise. Over six years old now she has remained ever present as one of the best if not the best AP jungler over that time. Regardless of the AP part she has an almost definitive jungle kit with a stun, map mobility, burst and more. As usual with our champion guides we're going to dive into her abilities, runes, items, first clears, ganking and more before closing with some highlights how you can navigate the mid and late game to use your early lead to get those wins. And of course don't forget to comment below which champion you would like to see in the champion guide next and yes again not Shaco. She is definitely not one of those AoE dominating teamfight champions that will take over in the late game so the focus of her playstyle is hyperactivity, confidence and zero waffling around the map. Let me now just give a brief overview of her core abilities. Obviously her R switches forms from human to spider and along with her passive gives her that innate healing on her auto attacks as well as that bonus movement speed when she is walking on 8 legs. But here you will see the importance of knowing all 6 of her core abilities. All of them have some kind of synergy between forms with the E being her cocoon and repel, the W in human form allowing her to spawn a kamikaze bursting spiderling that can probe unwarded bushes and in spider form gives her an attack speed steroid for 3 seconds that her spiderlings also benefit from and her Q is point and click in both forms with one doing percentage current HP and most notably her execute style bite in spider form that scales on missing HP. All of this means there is an optimal order to using her abilities in order to maximize their output. Here we can see a good slowdown example of a full combo showing the kind of pick based situation that Elise is really made for. Here where you flash to hit your cocoon, you immediately release your W as it does have a travel time, follow this by spitting your venom with Q and then immediately transform into a spider, use your spider Q to close the gap and get off as much damage as possible while they're in the cocoon and then your spiderlings and W attack speed can finish them off. The repel is regularly used to close gaps from fling targets, maybe they even flash away when your combo isn't enough to first grab the kill. But you can also use it to close the gap before switching to human form, however this isn't always the most beneficial as if the enemy has a flash or dash they can use it afterwards and then you won't be able to close that gap. However the threat of a cocoon is usually enough to burn a flash in most situations as people don't want to be caught in that web and that really sets up at least for those repeat ganks we talk so much about. She really enjoys lanes that have no flashes because you can walk up with your human form and use your repel after any dashes or escape plans are used. It's also worth noting that your attack speed steroid on the W lasts for 3 seconds and because you heal you need to spend some time learning the limitations of that ability in spider form so that if you're in a duel you might want to run away from you don't actually have to do that because you have more damage and healing than you might suspect. And when the target gets low enough you can use your spider Q to really roleplay into that giant monster and get the kill. Although I wouldn't go as far as you know actually mimicking the bite while you do it that would be a little odd. But I mean whatever makes you happy I guess. And it is also worth noting that her spiderlings which trail behind can be used to block enemy spells and prevent them from using ultimates as they chase you down. So if you might succumb to cowardice and want to flee situation keep that in mind. Now before we get onto the runes and items which everyone I'm sure is waiting for we just need to talk briefly about maximizing her kit because historically she has been considered that high elo that pro play jungler not to be used by mere mortals when they're trying to climb. Even if that notion is challenged a bit more nowadays there is some credence to that so maximizing a kit is vital to your success. And that comes in the form of using a kit to win skirmishes, navigate the map efficiently and get yourself ahead both in the game and perhaps also as a trophy after you destroy the enemy jungler. This means understanding that your human W can be used to probe unwarded areas before exploding beautiful venom all over the area. But also specifically this means knowing when to move around the map in spider form to gain access to the bonus movement speed but also when to be in human form so should an enemy surprise you or walk up to you in a bush you are ready to unleash your devastating combo that should make them feel like Frodo after he ran into the middle earth spider queen. Don't forget to also use your repel to navigate to safety in close quarter combats, to use it to hit plants for unique angled ganks and also to dodge vital spells like a Karthus ult or tower shots. Now I will show you examples of first clean ganking methods you can use but first let's talk about Ryze's favorite thing, runes. All of these abilities and the single target focus means maximizing your burst damage output is vital and why electrocute is the standard keystone of choice. At least is an early and mid game focus champion and so using a rune that lets you dominate the map as much as possible is imperative. And along with that what you see on screen are the best solo queue rune set available that brings you upfront damage, mobility and a bit of scaling with your eyeball collection. Valkaz would be proud. 
However, we can consider some high yellow variances that can prove useful for a more educated opposition. And that might be having the Ghost Poro protecting your spirit, maybe even sacrifice the Transcendence and Water Walking, or gathering the Storm if you're in a mid MMR where games tend to go longer, for perhaps a Precision Tree, getting Triumph and Alacrity or even Tenacity if you need it. Should you do this, you might also want to sacrifice the plus 9 attack speed from your Glyphs for some more AP. That would be useful given the attack speed does synergize nicely with her W attack speed steroid, gives you more healing in the jungle, but you do not need to overload on it. Finally, in Korea, the land of inspiration where they love to use inspiration, you can also snag some booties for all eight legs plus cosmic insight. However, I would recommend the full line in the middle as a standard page for those looking to really get into solo queue to learn the champion and to of course dominate and climb. There are some additions where you go Dark Harvest, but I still recommend Electrocute overall. To that end, itemization also has to have some sort of cohesion with your runes, champion skill set, and your goal for in-game performance. This means that this is the standard item build that often crops up, much to the dismay of LS who is pleading to a deity he doesn't believe to exist to quickly end him for seeing another unwarranted Morella Nomicon. Regardless, these are the 5 items you will regularly see in pro builds and other one tricks. However, don't forget to adapt and think about what you are actually building and consider the game that you are currently in. This means you could go for a Banshee's Veil for those teamfights, maybe you need that spell shield and magic resist. Maybe you're facing some HP stacking enemies and you need a Leandries. Maybe you want the utilities of Riley's to help set up your combo as well as your teammates. Should you be way far ahead in destroying the depths of Elo Hell, a death cap can also prove destructive. But on the point of the Morella Nomicon, the reason this is chosen is mostly for the Oblivion Orb that gives you that added flat magic pen along with Sword Boots, which Elise so loves. The core cool item on her for skirmishes and teamfights, as you can see in the clips, is definitely the stopwatch and the Zhonyas. Being able to get your magic pen and finish your Zhonyas without necessarily wasting more gold finishing Morellas when the enemy doesn't have any healing whatsoever is something that certain high MMR players do to gain that item power spike even faster. Now on this topic of Void Staff, magic penetration and things like that, I will leave a link in the description to a mathematician Zyra one trick who often has these same sort of item debates of avoid Morellos, Leandries that can be useful for Elise players also. I do always advise finding a master of the champion you wish to play, watching their build paths, situational adaption, and understanding that there's rarely a build that suits every single game in every single situation outside of core itemization. But I will leave you with a final tip of pay attention to the Dark Seal early. Much like Evelyn mains, if you get a few kills you can really snowball very heavily, especially useful if you do get a gank off and you perhaps have a kill at level 3 already. This can help you hard win the early game and close even faster, which again, we're going to look at now is what you want to do. And if you're going a bit more utility, don't forget Merc Treads are something you can use. Even Ninja Tabby, if you do want to be a little bit more tanky, have a little bit more added resistance in those games where you cannot afford to be frivolous. So I do talk about first clears a lot in these videos, so you'll see 4 examples on screen now which all have good and fast clears with the focus being on ganking hard, ganking early, invading hard, invading early. You're not wandering around the map aimlessly on your champion. The best clears revolve around that whole blue side and then taking the red buff. Doesn't matter in which order you do them, but you want to get level 3. You'll notice two of them are doing crow clears actually to get level 3, but then you're looking to take the enemy blue or your own blue afterwards. In the case of doing your red Krugs taking your blue, this is an example used by Owl Dominate in his game and he shows you that clutch level 3 cocoon flash under tower instead of flashing and then using your cocoon. Sometimes you want to wait to see if it hits before you actually react to use the rest of your combo. But the point is if this gank does not present itself, if you do not get any kill from this early pressure, you do have more camps to fall on on that side. But please note however that this is a longer route, it's less efficient, and should not be used as your primary pathing. Now your priority should not be rushing to level 6, you want to gank and you want to gank a lot. After your first clear and gank attempt, you want river control, invade control, keeping the enemy jungle in check. All of this along with continuous ganking pressure is on your to-do list in this early game. If the enemy jungler is ganking more than you, you're playing at least wrong. Unless of course you are role playing as a spider and setting up strong vision control and getting off a really nice counter gank as you will see in this example that shows you not only a good counter gank but also how to fluidly switch between human form and spider form, chase down an enemy and then maybe even switch back for the second round stun in human form again. Couple this with the fact that your pressure needs to be absolute, make sure you are pushing tower plates counter jungle, get deep wards, set traps, take heralds, take dragons, 
Her W means that towers can be melted very quickly and her healing is strong when you're clearing. Any jungle with this complete a kit means the control of the destiny in the game lies with you, the player. And yes, it's very easy to gank, take a tower, push Herald, clear your camps, go back and do the same thing again. And to that end, you can see a nice compilation of high low ganks on screen now. And the things you should be cognizant of throughout this process is using every early game pathing trick in the book, every repeat ganking procedure, any cheese stun tactic from a lane gank, and all six abilities seamlessly in whatever order the situation might dictate so that you can take what you were owed as the queen of the jungle. I will leave a link to all my early game jungle videos that are relevant to you dominating the early game in this fashion so that you can combine this footage of release with your now new ability knowledge to really create a dominating early game plan and package that will leave you climbing for, well, I guess seasons to come. But I also want to plant the seed in your mind that you need to think of the enemy jungler or simply the enemy jungle as another lane to gank because it not only keeps them down and gets you fed, it also gives you really nice angles on your ganks and at least with her e repel in spider form is what makes her the quintessential tower diving jungler. And this means you need to pay close attention to minion waves and know your clearing routes to optimize that approach in your play. And again, I have actually made a dedicated tower diving guide, but not a lot of people consider this as a skill you need to know, but it is if you want to play Elise. So again, that's in the top right for the raw theory, but the execution is down to you using your spells properly and knowing when to dodge that aggro with your spider form E. And now for our final section, with the assumption that you've had a strong early game, you've mastered all of the mechanics, you know your pathing, you're say 4-0 and 2, I will show you some highlight clips from SKT Clud, where he had a strong early game, but was then able to best position his team to win the game. And I will include the steps popping up on screen so you can keep track while I talk a bit more generally. The most important thing is to secure that Herald every game and attempt to use it on tower plates before that 14 minute cutoff. Remember, using a Herald with two plates left is also excellent as she does true damage and negates the stacking resistances the tower has gained through losing the previous plates. This will let you maximize your push, gold income, and tower advantage. All very important things for early game junglers. When you now have your core items, let's say at least Oblivion Ord, Zhonya's, and Sword Boots, you become very assassin-like. Not only can you make picks for your team, but you can also be a one-man army much like a Kha'Zix or Evelyn should you be able to use your scanner to get into a bush undetected. You will notice from the Clint highlights how important Zhonya's and the human form and spider form E abilities are to your success as you reach the later stages of the game. Elise's best in fights like these where we cut away, you can see chain CC and signal targets and then conducting a chase down to use them over and over again. She is also incredibly useful flanking from the side to take out those priority targets because of her proficiency at single target annihilation. But you are not a frontliner, you're not something that dives into the middle of the enemy team and jukes it out. Yes, your W is great, but it's not something that can sustain you against five other champions. Pay attention to how you navigate this phase, and if you've gotten yourself and your team ahead to the point that you are a pseudo-assassin, you have multiple drakes, you've had the Herald, Towers, then you can consistently push Towers and close games without those messy Arium 5v5s in the first place. However, as a final note, should you be behind or in a losing game, don't forget to use your Q poke, you have your anti-siege tool and wave clear in your W, and you also have the option to build a bit more utility so you can use your kit to stave off a loss and make picks needed to make a comeback and win. As with the ability to use all six of her abilities in human and spider form fluidly to get those ganks off to win the skirmishes, you also need to know how to adapt your runes and your itemization to best serve the champion. But should you master these core aspects and master your early game jungle plan, there is absolutely no reason why Elise in her current state cannot carry you much higher than any other more limited jungle champions could. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative, entertaining, and somewhat cheeky. Please consider liking, commenting, and sharing if you did. Don't forget to let me know what other champions you would like to see have a dedicated champion guide. Consider joining to officially support the content. Consider subscribing for even more jungle videos and tutorials coming up just like this one. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial. Thank you.